It says we're live. It also says we're backwards. So I'm gonna figure out how to turn the camera around. It's gotta be on here somewhere. No, that's request viewers. I look like an amateur, can't figure out how to swing the camera around. No, I don't wanna finish, I wanna continue. All right, here it is. I knew the button had to be there. We are live. Good evening, everybody. It is Tuesday. It is October 23rd, 2018, and we are live on the Jatai Academy Facebook page. I want to welcome everybody. Thank you once again for joining us here on Jatai Academy Live on Facebook. Uh, Ken has joined us this evening to be our uh, happy and friendly haircut model. So we're going to talk more about that in just a little bit as we get started. Uh, but as always, I want to welcome you into the program. Here we are at Mike's Barbershop in uh, Prospect Heights, Illinois, where I spend some time cutting hair when I'm not out and about and on the road. It's been a busy couple of weeks. Um, Fox Valley Cosmetology Association yesterday. Major League Barber uh, Minneapolis the day before. Salam International in London the week before that, and uh, there's a lot going on. It's an exciting time of year. Most exciting is that the show and education end of the year is really wrapping up. November, December, it's gonna be shop time. It's gonna be busy. So we're looking forward to uh, a really good, heavy holiday season to wrap up the year. We're in the fourth quarter already. Um, if you're on your way to big numbers to finish your year, congratulations. If you're not shaping up the way you want it to shape up, now's the time to plan for 2018. You know, when we talk about planning, we talk about being a $100,000 hair cutter, and it's become a bit of a tradition now for a lot of my educational programming that we start every class by taking a look at $100,000 hair cutter. If you know the book, it's my ninth book, introduced in January of this year, and it's one idea a day, every single day for 365 days. It's a daily devotional to success in the beauty and barber business. Keep it on your night table, wake up in the morning, turn to today, read today, put your shoes on, out the door you go, own the business. That's what it's all about. So real quick today, October 23, it is day 296 of this year with just 69 days remaining. If you're keeping track, that means you got about 64 days till Christmas, which means you've got about 63 days until my birthday. So there's enough shopping time left. We can get that done. Let's take a look at October 23. October 23, day 296, work in revolutions. Okay, I want you to see that this is but a sound bite. It's a small paragraph on the page with, of course, the handy dandy Ivan Doodles and drawings on there. Literally, this little sound bite is the essence of and the secret of the technique and the system that I developed to break the Guinness World Records. And Working in revolutions, what I'm gonna to suggest to you is, rather than me going into detail and reading this here and trying to explain it, we do wanna get right to the haircut, but what we do wanna tell you is, go to my YouTube channel. You're already a subscriber at Jatai Academy. If you're not, you know, J-A-T-A-I dot net on the web is Jatai Academy. Go there, sign up. Quality education and information for beauty and barber professionals literally pumped out of that website from people like me and other awesome professionals uh, on a daily basis, so go there. But also go to my YouTube, go to YouTube, search Ivan Zuder Clipper Guy, type in Revolution Cutting, because that's what this one is all about. Uh, there's videos there that explain it, it's my efficiency and productivity system. Absolutely worth the price of the book alone for that one tidbit of information because we're in a productivity based industry. What you earn is directly proportional to what you can produce on a daily basis. And when we talk about producing on a daily basis, creating haircuts in the shop, you guys know that I'm wildly passionate about short hair. That's why Ken's here tonight. We're talking flat top time. My favorite haircut, hands down. You guys know my logo. It looks like a flat top haircut. You guys know my head. It looks like a flat top haircut. This is my world. And I just want to point out one of the reasons why. Short hair, and when I talk about short hair, I mean this kind of short hair. When I talked to Ken when he walked in, I said, you normally about a two week haircut? And he said yes. And I said, you had about three weeks here? And he kind of made a face going like, yes. I set him up for the haircut over two weeks ago before I went to London. He promised not to get a haircut. He's been like reaching for the ponytail holders 
for the last several days because to him, this is an insane amount of hair. And I can so totally relate to that and understand it. But here's the deal, guys. Short hair comes back faster. They gotta get more haircuts to keep it tight. Short hair takes less time in the chair. Once your short hair skills are solid, you can crank them and that's just money. Short hair comes back faster. Short hair takes less time in the chair. Chair, short hair buys more take home hair care product. It's kind of a real oxymoron in our business. The less hair you have, the more stuff you need. And I talk about this in classes all the time. I'll ask a short haired participant in a class. Wait, don't go south on me here. All right, we don't want to lose the feed. And by the way, if we do lose the feed, if we're doing this haircut and all of a sudden, poof, it goes blank and it disappears. I want to make sure you understand. It's not because Facebook went down. It's not because there's anything wrong with my phone. If this dies in the middle, it is because my wife called me to tell me we won $2.2 billion in the freaking lottery. And if I get that call, we're done. I'm out. It's over. Ken and I are going to the bar and we're done for the evening. So know that that may happen. If it does happen, I love you guys, but I'm out. All right, so short hair. Short hair comes back faster. Short hair takes less time in the chair. Short hair uses more take home hair care product. That's right. I will ask a short haired participant or attendee at a class, how many bottles did it take for you to get out of the bathroom in the morning? And it's amazing. It's shampoo, it's conditioner. Uh, it's a little bit of gel to blow it dry. It's a little bit of wax to keep the front edge up. Um, you know, and then there's, of course, uh, all the other cosmetic and toiletry products we use every day. I always say the woman that you see at Walmart in sweats and a ponytail who gets two haircuts a year, she's not doing you or me or our industry a bit of good. These are the guys on which the foundation or our income as barbers and hair cutters are made. Short hair comes back faster. Short hair takes less time in the shear. Short hair buys more take home hair care product. Short hair buys more chemical services. Take a good look here. Ken's got a little bit of hair color in the front fringe there. And the beautiful thing about coloring short hair is you cut it off as fast as you color it. And here we are coloring it again. Long hair hair color is about keeping up with the roots. And I know you hair colorists don't like me to say roots. You like to call it outgrowth so that we can be professionals. But long hair hair color is about keeping up with the roots. Short hair hair color is about keeping up with the ends. Because that's the only place you have any hair color because the whole thing is ends. Short hair comes back faster. Short hair takes less time in the chair. Short hair buys more take home hair care product. Short hair buys more chemical services. Short hair, one of my favorites, short hair sends more referrals. Nobody looks at somebody with long hair past their shoulders and goes, oh, look, her hair is straight. I wonder who cut that. But you rock out a killer flat top or a really awesome pixie cut. These people can't go out in public without literally being harassed. Can you get through dinner at a restaurant without somebody asking you about a fresh flat top? No. It's not even possible. That's right. And by the way, a guy like this, if he's your client, and you guys know I've taught you these three sentences in so many classes. We're going to review them. We're going to cover business before we get into haircutting. Three sentences, every client, every time. From the top, they sound like this. Sentence number one. Ken, thank you for the opportunity to cut your hair. That was sentence number one. Here we go from the top. Two sentences. Ken, thank you for the opportunity to cut your hair. I appreciate your business. That's two sentences. Thank you for the opportunity to cut your hair. I appreciate your business. Are you ready for sentence number three? Here we go. Ken, thank you for the opportunity to cut your hair. I appreciate your business. If I gave you two cards, would you send me two friends? Yes. A guy like this is never allowed out of the building without two business cards because 45 minutes after he walks out the door, somebody's going to go, yo, dude, who cut your flat? And out comes the card, and I got a new customer, and by the way, I got a policy. I stick by this policy, I encourage you to establish this policy. The policy is, you send me one, I cut you free. You send me one, I cut you free. You know, we have a history in our business of making people jump through crazy hoops. We love to play games with customers. The game we like to play is, okay, here's how it works. If you send me four new customers, I'll give you $8 off on your next haircut on Tuesdays after 4.30. Don't jerk people around like that. Make it real clean and real simple. You send me one, I cut you free. Because you know what? Every once in a while you got a client who's one of those bird dog clients, like that hound dog. Every time you turn around, they come back with a rabbit in their mouth, bringing you fresh meat. The 
essence of what referrals are all about in this business. Trust me, you'll be in this business for years, you'll have a client who'll never send you anyone. And then you'll have a guy like this who's gonna send you somebody every week. And believe me, if he's gonna send me somebody every week, I cut him for nothing. That's good business, that's how you build and grow. So, we're gonna get into it. We said we were cutting a flat top. We are cutting a flat top. We're going zero. We're going high and tight. We're going to skid them out on top. We're going to, and it's important to understand, the essence of cutting a flat top is the intersection of a horizontal top with a vertical side. And I'm going to shift the camera just a little bit. I don't want to lose him as we go. But horizontal top with a vertical side. Now, since he's already short, you've already got some incline some curvature, the technical term for this, it comes from shipbuilding, this is referred to as tumble home. When you look at a boat sitting on the water, or as more people can relate to, when you look at a car, straight on the front of a car, a car is usually widest at what they call the belt line, which is a point below the bottom edge of the windows. It's kind of where you put the bump strips for people in the parking lots, at the widest point of the car. And when you look at a car straight on, the windows curve in, and the roof of the car is narrower than the overall width of the car. And that tendency of the sides to roll in like that comes from naval architecture. Ships are generally wider at the water line than they are at the, uh, what do they call the sides? It's not the bows, the front, the sterns, the back, the sides, port and starboard. It's wider at the water line than it is at, I mean, if it's a canoe, it's the gunwales or whatever they call them. But you know what I mean, it decides like that. That tendency to tip in is called tumble home, falling in towards the center, tumble home. And so essentially we call this a tumble home flat top. It kicks in like that, kind of, a, kind of an engineering term, if you will, for what we're gonna try to do. So we're gonna get on a zero blade, we're gonna come up, and initially we're gonna come past the curve of the head so that we can then build in that sidewall. But instead of being horizontal top with a vertical side, we're gonna be horizontal top with a side that angles in. There will still be a bit of a corner. And the corner is the essence of the haircut. As soon as I lop off the corner, it's a crew cut. It's a buzz cut, uh, and you call it a lot of other things, but don't call it a flat top. Because it isn't a flat top if it's not flat on top. That being said, be more mindful of the fact that if, depending on head shape and bone structure, if we're straight off at the top, a lot of times the front edge is too long. And you'll notice if I turn him in profile and I come straight off the top of his head with my comb, you'll notice there's a gap between the comb and the hair. What that tells you is either it's collapsed and it needs some stronger gel, or more than likely when it's freshly cut, it's not really horizontal. It's actually slightly lower at the front edge based on cranial shape, bone structure, and the positioning of his hairline relative to the curve of the head. There's a lot of math and science going on here. Night one of beauty school, they're like, dude, it's geometry. I'm like, I'm out, forget it. This is gonna be bad. But it wasn't that part of geometry. It was the part of geometry that was lines and angles and circles and, and, and protractors as opposed to proofs. It's the good part of geometry. So when we're done, we're gonna come up and it's actually gonna drop slightly forward in order to get that front edge short enough. Because I've cut them where I come up over the top and I come horizontal and the guy looks at it in the mirror and goes, dude, that's awesome, but the front edge is too long. You gotta take that front edge down. So not only will our vertical sidewall kick in, but our horizontal top will cant slightly forward. And the way you know you got it right is when you look at a client and you take them to the mirror, and I'm gonna turn Ken towards the camera as though the camera was the mirror, and you'll say, how does that look? And what these guys will do when they go to check it is they'll look straight ahead in the mirror and then they'll go like this. And they'll kick their chin up. Because they'll kick their chin up and then they see that it's flat. Well, their, their head's no longer level, so it's no longer horizontal. It becomes horizontal when their chin gets, and he's nodding because he knows what I'm talking about. He's going like, and boom, then you know Yeah, Ken. That's my wife texting me to make sure. Your name's Ken, right? Yeah. Okay, I, I, I called him Ken, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> That's my wife in the background coaching me. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, kicked in, canted forward, super tight. And when we're done, we're gonna lather and we're gonna go in with our feather razor. I've got my artist club, my Scotchwood handle, feather razor. And everybody knows I love my ProGuard blade. 
You know you've got standard, you've got heavy, you've got light, you've got pro guard, and you've got soft guard. You've got fabulous blade choices from Feather. We're the gold standard of the world in professional shaving razor blades. Scotchwood handles, my favorite of the SF, of the Artist Club folding razors. And she's saying something to me again. I gotta see before it goes away. Okay. Um, I've got my Nathan Body. I won't be using Nathan Body tonight, but I do want to point out Nathan Body because if you are a cosmetology professional and you want to be lathering and cleaning up the edges of haircuts, you know that that wire wrapping on the blade opens up the possibilities that in many states, like right here in the state of Illinois, make straight edging not legal if you don't have a protected blade. But as soon as you pick one of these up, you're good to go to enhance those haircuts. And when I say enhance those haircuts, as a professional, what you just heard me say is, charge more. That's what you heard me say. What I will use tonight, because everybody knows it's my favorite, is Japanese handle. Holds the same shaving blades as the Artist Club SS, uh, but this is my uh, Japanese handle. This one's got the rubber grip on it. Um, I just the size to feel the balance of this. Um, this was made for my hand, so that's my baby. Uh, that's my favorite. That's the one I use all the time. Of course, as always, we've got a gift for our model. Um, he's going to be going home with, and he loves it when I call him a model. All of a sudden, it's like I turned into Chris Hemsworth or something. Um, healthy luxury shave set from Jatai. Uh, we always have it available for purchase here in the shop. We're always suggesting and recommending it. We're sharing it with our customers. And I've got a couple of open samples. Moisturizer we'll use when we're done. Shave cream we're going to use to do the shaving with. Uh, we'll talk about that when we get to that part of the haircut. But let's get the clipper out and let's get busy and let's get flat with this. Uh, tape and drape and on our way. As always, next trip. Uh, we're going to take his collar now. He had a button to give us a button. We're going to fold the collar in, not splay the collar out. This becomes extraordinarily important. And I'm a stickler for keeping people really clean because I believe you can do a beautiful haircut on a guy at 9 o'clock in the morning. Perfect haircut. And he loves you. But at his 2.30 meeting in the afternoon, with that much hair down the back of his shirt, he don't love you anymore. So you've got to keep people clean. Strip as always, we use paper. Paper, Sanic, next strips. Uh, these are uh, the Barbie shop towels. Hang on, it says, wait. The Barbie shop towels, we use paper. Paper is actually better in the long run. It's more environmentally friendly. You don't have dirty linen present in the shop. A lot of good reasons why we go with paper. And of course, now it's time for the cape. The cape sits on the next strip. That's the purpose of the next strip. Uh, the, unless you're using a freshly laundered cape for every customer, classic barber stripes tonight. Uh, we can fold that next strip down along the collar and he looks good and he is good to go. We're going tight. I'm gonna pick up my adjustable blade clipper. I'm gonna go to the open position on the blade because we wanna blend off and we're gonna come in at the perimeter, I'm going to work them up tight. Now, when we looked at $100,000 hair cutter earlier, it talked about the idea of revolution cutting, which is that idea of work in revolutions around the head. Start at one point and revolve around the head as we cut. The idea behind the concept is the hair cutter would remain stationary and you would bring the work to you as opposed to running circles around the client with the clipper. Put the miles on the customer, don't put the miles on, uh, on yourself. Now you'll notice, balance, stability, and control. I've got one hand above the clipper, one hand below the clipper. It's a two-handed process or operation. If I don't have two hands on the tool in this way, sometimes you'll see one hand on the clipper, one hand on the client. Now, this is an open blade. We're gonna go to triple zero, but you'll notice, notice where I'm standing. I'm standing 15 minutes away from my work. What I mean by that is we're gonna look at his head like it's a clock. His nose is 12 o'clock, his occipital bone is six o'clock, and the ears are nine and three. What I mean when I say this is, if I'm cutting hair at six o'clock, 
at the back of his head. I don't want to stand at 6 o'clock at the back of his head. I want to stand at 9 o'clock. Because by standing 15 minutes away, I can view the surface that I'm cutting in perspective. I can assess surface quality in perspective looking at it from over here. If he's got inconsistencies or irregularities in the surface of the haircut, I can assess that in perspective. If I'm standing at the back of him looking at the back of him, it's like looking at a black cat in a coal bin. You have no ability to see what's going on in there. Everything starts to blend together and you lose that sense of perspective. So we're continuing to work below the curve of the head, and you'll notice as I come up past the curve of the head, I'm knocking in past where we would with a taper. If this was a tapered haircut, there'd be a lot of that classic rocking motion that you're so familiar with, and you're not seeing that tonight because due to the shape we're trying to create past the curve of the head, I'm cutting well past the curve of the head. Now we're gonna get into unfamiliar territory for some folks, but we're going to get into some challenging territory with some folks because we're going to be looking to blend a haircut at a point that is thinner than, shorter than, or closer than the thickness of our comb. So we're riding off the surface of the head to build our haircut shape. So that's going to become what we'll call challenging territory for some folks when this starts to get in tight and close. But notice we're working past the curve of the head, and by working past the curve of the head in that way, I already have a tight blend. If he liked the top of this haircut longer, I've blended up and in on this. If the fire alarm went off and we had to quit cutting right now, this is still a well-blended haircut. Now, we're getting into a little area of controversy with a lot of my videos because we've gone past the curve of the head and we want to continue to blend up and in through here and I'm going to go to side fading. I'm going to go to side motion where I'm going to turn the blade sideways relative to the haircut and come in to really blend that through. And again, I'm cutting at 3 o'clock and everybody sees me standing at 6 o'clock. That is 15 minutes or 3 hours or 90 degrees away from the surface at which I'm working. Now Ken's hair is a little bit finer in texture and it's a little bit lower in density. Do not confuse those two things. I just referred to texture and density and know that they're two things. Density is hairs per square inch. Texture is the thread-like property of the individual hairs. So you can have high density meaning lots of hairs, and have them be fine, meaning very, very slender or, or, or minute in diameter. And you can also have very sparse hair, very little hairs per square inch, but very thick hair where you need like a bolt cutter to snap through it. Now, in his case, his hair is finer in texture and lighter in density. So we have to factor that into some of our work around the head. I'm going to go now underneath the bottom. I'm going to close up my blade. I was previously in the opener number one position. Now I've gone to triple zero, and I'm going to tighten up that area through the perimeter with my triple zero. And I'm taking a lot of hair off right now. You don't see it as a lot of hair, but the difference between triple zero and one in a haircut, especially to a client who's used to having a very short haircut like this, that's a lot of hair. That's a lot of difference and he's nodding his head because I'm not cutting the top. When I cut the top, he won't nod his head like that. He knows better than that. But that's a lot of difference. You can feel the difference. Down here, he feels shaggy still. Up here, he's starting to get nice and clean and tight. It's gonna be a beautiful looking haircut, if I do say so myself. So now we're coming in here tighter. I'm focusing on getting that perimeter in good. Now we're gonna finish him off tonight with a foil shaver and with our Artist Club razor and a blade and our Healthy Luxury Shave products and really clean them up tight. He's going to like it. I'm going to like it. It's going to be good. Now notice where we've got a little bit of slack in the scalp. Now I've moved to putting my hand on the client and into what we call scalp scooting. Scalp scooting is where we're taking up slack or tension on the scalp with our thumb on the head for the purpose of a clean tight finish. Um, where we have what we call variations in cranial topography, 
I love that expression. Variations in cranial topography. Anybody out there in listener land know what that means? Variations in cranial topography is a fancy way of saying dude's got a bumpy head. But you know what I mean when I say it. And I take off my glasses and I have a high point, a low point, and a high point in my bone structure. And if you skin me up with a clipper, you cut me short on the hills and you leave me long in the intervening valley. Ken, have you ever had a haircut where they run the blade over you and you're patchy like a dog with a fur disease because they don't know to take that slack out and blend it through? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But, you know, and guys get a lot of haircuts. you got to remember, if Ken's a two-week haircut, over the course of a 10-year period, he is getting three times as many haircuts as most people. So he's got a lot more experience and exposure to the haircut process. A lot of, and these guys are great clients because they just... They, they love the barbershop experience. It's such a part of their lifestyle on a regular basis. And they truly know their way around some of the terminology and some of the things that we do. So they're, they're always fun clients to have. All right, I'm gonna switch to a trimmer. I'm going to an Andis T out, going to a mag motor, and this one's got their wider tooth pattern. I'm not gonna catch a lot of hair, but I'm gonna catch some. And this is really gonna tighten up the bottom edge to put my finish on it before we go in with our foil shaver. And a couple days ago, I think it might have been uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, the tip of the day in the book had to do with auditory cutting. It talked about the idea of cutting visually by looking at visual cutting pro pro progress, but it also talked about the importance of being quiet, something I'm not typically good at, but being quiet, I'm gonna try it now, And most of the magnetic motor tools will do this. If you're quiet while you're cutting, you can literally hear cutting progress. And it's a form of confirmation. You're asking yourself the question, am I catching hair or not uh, in my blade? And sometimes you can see cutting happen. Other times at very short lengths, you rely on that snapping motion of the hair in the blade to confirm the effectiveness of a given cutting tool and the cutting process. At the top edge of my T outliner section, once again you saw me come in there sideways. If I was on the dark side of the moon there, I apologize. I'm coming in sideways to do that final transitional blending. And now we're going to switch to foil shaver. This is where we separate the hair cutters from the hair cutters. We're going to come in with the foil shaver on here. Can take a hand out. Feel that corner. Is that close? Is that how you like it? Yep. I just bought them like an extra day and a half between now and the next haircut with the foil shaver. Literally, the difference between the finish on the bottom edge with a tee out and the finish on the bottom edge with a foil shaver is a couple of days of additional haircut. And when you, you know, again, when you're a 14 day haircut, you know, now you're 17 days. I mean, and the goal is not to gap them out too far. We love our high frequency customers. We want them in the shop all the time but they love that clean, tight finish, and we will pop, final polish this with, yes, our straight edge. We're gonna really call it done. And don't get excited and don't think we've come very far, because we haven't touched the top, and that's the heart of the haircut, and that's coming up next. the top. Because his hair is fine and because his hair is lighter in texture, we got to put a little bit of product in there. We're going to dampen his hair slightly. I don't want it wet and very little water will get that very wet very quickly. Just a little bit of dampness and we go to firm hold styling gel. A small amount of gel. Those of you that are diehard classic hair cutters know that while I use a little bit of firm hold gel, and one of the reasons I use gel is because I sell gel and people take gel home and gel is an important revenue generator for the shop. If you want to go old school and classic, there are lots of guys out there when it comes time to prep the top, they won't reach for the gel, but they will reach for the shave cream. 
They'll go to the hot lather machine and they'll put a small amount of hot lather in the hair because if you've ever shampooed your hair and not rinsed all the soap out, you know that hair that has a little bit of soap in it has a little bit of fight, a little bit of bite, and a little bit of textural resistance. Now we go to one of my favorite little tools. That is your uh, Bebop brush, but for blowing the hair up. I'm not gonna over talk the blow dryer, but I can direct and control short quantities of hair. I'm gonna get a blow dryer with medium temperature. I'm gonna dry the hair, and I'm gonna get everything standing up the way I want it. Not pushed back, not pushed forward, but up, 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 off the head. Give me a minute, no talking, listen to the blow dryer, and we'll be good to go. takes to dry a little bit of hair just like that. And that's gonna work out really well. Now, I've got the hair up and I've got the hair dry. I want a little more product in the hair for a little bit of fight, a little bit of bite, and a little bit of tenacity. Here's where we go with something like my clipper guy, Matt Paste. Wanna go old school, we got crew comb. Crew comb's a little bit heavy and a little bit oily for his hair texture, so I'm more inclined to go with the paste. The other one that's a really good choice, and I have one up front, is a wax stick as opposed to a pot wax or a puck wax. This wax, again, is going to be a little too wet and a little bit too light for his hair. So something that's a little bit drier, notice there's very low level of moisture in here, a little bit drier, and we don't need a lot. That's plenty. I always show people how much we use when we're demoing products, and I always like to hand the product to the customer so the customer can start looking at the label, getting familiar with it, getting experience, getting ready to purchase. You know how that stuff goes. There's a rule there, never take the product away from somebody. Another rule is always give them fresh product. Don't give them your counter sample. Give them a real take home one, because once they physically touch it, they begin to bond and develop a relationship with it. They don't want to give it back, and don't take it back. Let them go up front, just take their money and send them on their way. Little bit of matte paste on there. It's got a little bit of a drier feel to it. It's gonna bulk up his hair just a little bit and we get great resistance against the comb and beautiful cutting from that. We get it off our hands and we'll get ready to cut. Now, cutting the top, there's three directions. There are middle cutters, people who start in the middle and work their way out. There's front edge cutters who start at the front and work their way back, and there's back guys who start at the back and work their way forward. What do I do? Anybody know? Anybody want to guess? Give you the answer. Depends. It'll depend on what I'm seeing and what I'm noticing in terms of growth pattern and direction, how the hair is behaving and how the hair is responding, and how much length he has versus how much length he wants. What I'm going to do today is I am going to start at the front edge, and I'm going to cut front to back to the middle, then I'm going to go back to front to the middle, and then I'll deal with the sides. Triple zero closer closed position, my adjustable blade clipper, a classic clipper comb for flat top cutting, and there's my big cut right there. Right there. Now, By over-directing it a little bit, I've got shorter hair just behind the front edge. That's my front edge cut. I'm gonna carry that back through the haircut to top, dead, center. I'm gonna look at it sideways to confirm that I'm liking it. Notice it's flat, but it's not horizontal. It's canted slightly forward. I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. I'm going to come to the side here and pull that in. Still working essentially front to center. And I'm going to go to the opposite side. See how much higher this side is? Let's bring it in and match it up to what we got going on in the middle. Barbers cut hair in white shirts or white jackets. This is not a white shirt. What is it? It's a high performance hair cutting backdrop. Look at his head up against my shirt or backdrop 
I would be using, I am using my mirror, looking at his head. You can't see my mirror over there, but I got a mirror here and a mirror there. I'm standing here, I'm looking there, and I'm going, damn, I'm getting good at this. Yeah, now I'm checking my work. That's how we do it. Okay, I cut the front edge back and the two front corners in. Right now, we got a ton of hair up in through here. Now I'm gonna come up off the back side. I wanna turn this so you can see it. I'm gonna come up off the back side on this, and I'm going right up and in to top dead center. Now I wish I could have him, I can't. Tip your chin now. See that space? Look at that. That's called a landing strip. If we had a very small airplane, we bring it right in and land it right on that patch. Now, what we're gonna do from that short point at top dead center, and this is where we freak, freak people out. When we demo this in classes, that's when people, somebody in the room sucks wind. They're like, what are you gonna do about that? Well, the answer is we're gonna blend to it. From this point here at the apex of the head, the hair will get longer as we move forward, longer as we move to the side, longer as we move to the side, and see this chunk of hair in the two rear corners? Those are gonna be my blending points off of which I'm gonna round into the top of the head. So I'm gonna come in like this now, and you'll notice in some cases my comb is too thick, which is fine. That's when we'll come in freehand, but initially we're gonna work off of that top center section to blend this through. Now we're gonna start doing something I call riding a gap. And what I mean by that is, I come in low on Ken's head with the leading edge of the clipper blade in the triple zero closer closed position on his head. But as I get up past the curve of the head, now I've got a gap at the front edge of the blade. I go from blade on the head, or tip of the blade on the head, to tip of the blade not on the head. That's called riding a gap. I start to progressively create that gap between the blade and the head to determine that length progression into my top, my flat top and my corner. I'm gonna redirect all this interior hair down from above. See how he's got a little ledge or a little wing right here? I'm gonna throw that wing down. Look at all that hair hanging out of the comb. That is a big, furry chunk of hair. And this is what flat topping where it gets tight. This is what freaks people out because right or wrong, long or short on his head, the difference between what he wants and what he doesn't is a piece of hair you can barely measure. You know, when a woman comes in with hair down her shoulders and wants to come up to the shoulder, that's easy. You know, you're cutting off a huge piece of hair and you're leaving behind a huge piece of hair. But the, the margin for error and the difference between right and wrong when the haircuts get this tight is so narrow and close. Look, at you see the size of the chunk of hair that just fell off? That was such a big piece of hair. When I cut it off Ken's head, it made a thumping noise when it landed on the floor. Did you hear it? I can heard it absolutely. And, and that's what we're talking about. And, and a lot of haircutters go, what are you talking about? But believe me, it's a huge, huge difference. That was a lot of hair that just came away. Now, notice, I'm rounding out in this rear corner, and you'll start to see this all take shape. Now, sneaky trick. My finger becomes my clipper guard. See how my pinky is on the back side of the blade as I come in here? I'm using my pinky to control my distance from the head. It's like snapping a guard on the back of the clipper, but in the form of my finger. Because I want to regulate my closeness that I can't really do with a guard, because a guard is going to give me a very consistent and uniform shape. Ignore this side of the head. I haven't cut it yet. It's furry and it's all whacked out. But look what's going on on that side. I've got my center section up the back that's progressively moving into my short front. I've got my center section up the back that's progressively moving into longer and thicker right in here. When you look down at him from above when we're done, it's called a horseshoe flat top for a reason because it looks like a horseshoe right here. And you'll notice one of the cool things, we didn't plan this, I didn't know Ken was bringing me this, but because he has that little remnant of hair color, what you're gonna see when we're done tonight 
is there's a tiny little bit of gold, and right now there's a lot more gold right here, but that's all coming away. We didn't do that side yet. But there's gonna be this rim of gold right around there that's gonna be a great way to showcase that length progression. I mean, we've done this, I've actually done shows in the past where what we've done is we've kind of rigged the model up a little bit by having a guy get lightened or bleached or colored like three and a half, four weeks before we're gonna cut him on stage. And then he may be naturally very dark with yellow white hair in through the top. And then not only does it look like wolf fur, so it looks cool anyways, but once we cut it down, you can read length by reading color, which is a stunning way to showcase the length progressions as they're happening on the head. So that's a little gift Ken brought. Uh, didn't know I was gonna get that little gift tonight, but I'm happy to have it. Notice I'm combing against that growth direction, and I'm just chasing some last little pieces on this side. And if haircuts were 50% off, we'd be done. Because now we have half of a smoking horseshoe going on there. And what that means is we have to cut the other half. Now, I'm gonna turn him backwards to you guys. One of the cool things about working on video in this way was, you're gonna get dizzy, sorry. Um, this side I cut with his nose to you, so you saw me come in with the comb and take that weight off. On the other side, because I'm right-handed, I'm gonna reverse the chair, I'm gonna draw that hair down, and now you're gonna see what that's gonna look like happening from the other side of the head. I use my mirror, I reference what I got, and see how, look at that ridge, we call that a flat top with ears, where they're sticking out like that, that ear's gotta come away. I just want to check, oh yeah, oh yeah, we're there. Okay, here we go. Down from above, looking for that tumble home shape, smooth off that big fat extra weight line of hair, now we're gonna come in and round out this upper corner so that we're blending. We're gonna come in right off the scalp, right off the scalp. Nice. And now we're gonna go in as we did before with the blade directly. And here's where pinky time. My pinky gets in underneath there. Part of the reason I have to do that with my pinky this way is because I have to work with the shape as I see it and what I want to do, but I also have to contend with growth direction. And he's got some very strong forward growth direction that if I try to come from the back to the front with forward growth direction, rather than cutting the hair, the hair is going to lay down ahead of the blade, fall under the blade, and as soon as I get past it, it's just going to pop back up. So I have to go against the natural growth direction, which on this side had me coming back that way. And on the opposite side, and here we go. Everybody notice that happen? I just switched hands. This is where we go just a wee bit ambidextrous. There's only a couple of times on a couple of haircuts and a couple of places where I dare to put the clipper in the other hand, and this is one of them. All right. Now, I want to do this in such a way that you can see it. And I guess if I move to this corner here, you'll see it well. I'm going to set the blade on his head, but not the leading edge of the blade. I'm going to be back here on the blade, and I'm going to lower it and only dip it in as much as I need to catch hair. See how it caught that hair? You see that the hair roll off like a snowplow on the front end of a truck? I hate to be making snowplow analogies in October, but... Hey, you know what? We're just around the corner from needing to talk about that stuff here in Chicago. I know for our West Coast viewers, this program is on a little earlier in a part of the world where it doesn't snow. Or at least it snows up in the mountains where people go skiing. It doesn't snow in downtown Los. Look at that from the back. See what you got going on there from the back? You can see the corners are building. It's rounded, it's rounded, it's empty with a progression of length towards the front. Look at that from the sides, you can see. And what's nice, an advantage of his having slightly lighter hair color, slightly finer hair texture, and slightly lighter hair density, is you can see his head shape. And while he might say, man, I'd love to have thicker hair, if you're gonna be demonstrating this, the visual benefit of seeing the head shape within what's going on with the haircut makes this you know, visually uh, stunning for all of us out here in haircut land. So, one more speed, okay. Did you see me looking, thinking at that? I looked at it, you saw me thinking, should I put the comb in or should I go freehand? The length told me I could still get the comb in there, so I went with 
the coal. And now what I'm doing is I'm turning and I'm looking in perspective and I'm looking and I'm turning and I'm turning and I'm looking. And you see that high spot right there? If you don't, it's okay because I do. I'm just gonna polish off anything we see in the form of a high spot in there. Looking good, all right. One of the most important steps comes up right now. I wet it, I dried it, I cut it. And I could say thank you very much, walk away and send it home. But we all know I've got to wet it again, dry it again, and cut it again. Because when I wet it and dry it and cut it again, things are going to lay differently, distort a little bit, and all of a sudden we're going to see we're not flat as we thought we'd like to be where we'd like to be. So we're going to wet it and dry it again. I'm actually going to switch to a fade brush. So I'm going to use one of these. Using a fade brush made from silicone because it is sanitizable. Okay, I'm going to get out of there with a fade brush. The soft side of this fade brush is allowing me to brush out any clippings that are sticking to the head. A lot of times if you've got a little bit of humidity in the shop, a little bit of perspiration on the client, you're cutting here, it's been cut off, so technically it belongs to me, but if it's sticking to his head, it's still on him and it impedes my ability to really read the fade well. Looking okay, good. All right, now, I blow, I wet it, I dry it, and now I see, now it's where I get picky. Little things here and there that I just have to chase after. The cycle, wet it, dry it, cut it, wet it, dry it, cut it. The question is, for those of you out there in listener land, how many times will I wet it, dry it, cut it, and wet it, dry it, cut it, Wet it, dry it, cut it. How many times do we do that in the course of a haircut? Anybody know the answer to that question? The answer is, it's not a number. The answer is I'm gonna wet it and dry it and cut it, and wet it and dry it and cut it, until the one time that I wet it and dry it, and there's nothing to cut. Typically with me, it's three. You saw one, this is two. Two is where I confirm that I think I got what I got. I wet it and I dry it and I cut it. I thought I was really good, but I'm not as good as I think I am because there's always a few things sticking up that need to be polished off. Chasing the wild ones. Looking good, nice, nice. That's two. And then what I normally do is I will wet it one more time and dry it one more time. A little bit higher in that corner. To call it a day. Hopefully you've come to rely on Jatai Academy for this kind of in-depth quality technical education. Hopefully you're subscribing and you're getting the videos emailed to you every single day. Hopefully you're jumping in when we go live like this every night. We got a bunch of people watching here on live. I know a bunch more are going to watch this on replay because we get the link and we spread it out there on social. We hope you'll tag it. We hope you'll comment on it. We hope you'll share it with your friends. But we're going to finish up. We're going to wet it one last time. A little bit of moisture. We're going to dry it one last time before we go in to finish with our razor edging. All right. While we're at it, we pick up a trimmer. We're going to go after details. Details are ears in the ear. Let's turn that so you can see it. Top of the ear, in the ear, on the ear, eyebrows. Eyebrows? Yes. Eyebrows. Remember, ask one word with a question mark on the end. It sounds like this. Eyebrows? Yes. There you go. I don't have to explain the whole process to him. If he doesn't want me to trim him, he'll say, no, 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 leave him. If he wants me to trim him, he knows what I mean. If you say to a guy, eyebrows, and he goes, huh? Like he doesn't know what you're talking about, that means it's time to check him. It's your job. The small end of my zoot comb is my detailing, trimming, and finishing comb. Perfect for this type of small work. You'll notice I went, because of his finer hair, I can cut flat tops all day long with my zoot comb, but you'll notice I did go to my classic clipper comb tonight, and that's a function of density. On thicker, heavier hair, I would have gone with a zoot comb. On finer textures of hair, I went with a classic clipper comb. It's part of knowing your tools and knowing your options available to you under any given circumstance for 
situation. So we're looking good, we're feeling good, things are nice and short. Now it's time to go into Jatai territory. Here we go. We're gonna open the cape, we're gonna take off that next strip. Still being sure to keep it nice and clean. We've got a little bit of what I call extraneous hair. That's hair below the natural hairline, not really part of the haircut. We'll make sure that's gone. Now, let's talk about shaving and let's talk about the business side of shaving. Many of us use lather from a hot lather machine. However, we know we want to talk about and we want to promote products that we have available for purchase. And the Jatai Healthy Luxury Shave products, moisturizer and shave cream, are good examples of the kind of products we should be retailing, we must be retailing, and we can be using. But that being said, a lot of guys like the warm lather, and the warm lather is part of that shave experience. So I'm going to share with you what I tend to do in the shop that not only supports the client experience, but also supports my desire to suggest and recommend professional take-home hair care product and to utilize that product in conjunction with the service. So what I do is I'm going to go to my hot lather and I'm going to apply my hot lather around my edges like we want to. I'm going to apply my hot lather, I'm going to apply my hot lather, I'm going to apply my hot lather because it's part of the experience. Doesn't it feel good? Isn't that part of the experience? Absolutely. We're going to apply that hot lather just like that. Now is the time, hot lather's on there. Now is the time that I would be putting a fresh blade in my razor. I've got my sharps bit on the counter for the blades as they get thrown away. No blades in a Pepsi can. Uh, Feather makes the little blade disposal boxes for the classic freestyle razor. You can drop shaving blades in those little guys too. It works great. I'd be putting my new blade in my handle. I did it before the video. But instead of going in and shaving, what I will do at this point is I'm going to take my paper towel and I'm going to clear away the shave cream. You know you're not supposed to be shaving through an ocean of foam anyways. All those Gillette commercials where a guy's shaving and it looks like he's plowing snow, that's, you don't do that. You can't see where you're shaving, you can't control the surface or anything like that. And Barber Guy doesn't do that. He lathers and he clears away the shave cream before he goes in and shaves. Lather is designed to soften the hair and to provide slickness on the skin for smooth razor progression. So we got it damp and we use that product now, I'm going to add a little bit of moisture, okay? Spraying my hand, applying a small amount of moisture. I'm going to get one more clean towel, because I took away the previous one. And now, I'm going to pick up my Jatai Healthy Luxury Shave Cream. I'm going to put a small amount, I'm going to show them how much I'm using. I'm going to put a small amount of it in my hand, and I'm going to apply this on top of the skin that has been prepped and the hair that's been softened with my warm lather so that he has the experience that is so much a part of this. And notice this stuff, the Jatai shave cream, the Healthy Luxury shave cream does not foam. It remains clear. I can see everything. I'm gonna get great blade slide and blade glide. I've got my Japanese handle. I've got my ProGuard blades. Now I'm gonna come in and I'm going to shave. Now remember, we went over this with a foil shaver, so it's nice and close already, but now we're getting that beautiful finish that is so much a part of that haircut experience. Chin down just a little, apply pressure to keep that skin tight. Beautiful close clean shaving, wiping excess away on the paper. I keep moving out of the line of sight on the camera. I want you guys to see what I'm doing. Tension on the skin. Clean up that bottom edge. Again, Japanese handle, pro guard blade, backhand stroke on the temple on the opposite side, up and around the ear. And we've shaved the perimeter on there nice and clean and close with that pro guard blade. Last thing we do, the paper comes away. We would wipe up any excess shave cream anywhere around the edges. Aftershave, now my secret with my aftershave is one part aftershave to seven parts witch hazel. 
I mix that in that formula. I like to say it cuts the sting and the stink on the aftershave. You don't have the sting from all that alcohol. You got a beautiful finish on there and we're good to go. That's all there is to it. I'm Ivan Zoot for Jatai Academy. Ken, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate your willingness to donate some hair for all of their education and training. It's wonderful to have you here tonight. J-A-T-A-I.net on the web. That's Jatai Academy. We're going to wrap it up in under an hour because I think that's all Facebook will let us do anyways. I'll go back through this post later for any comments or questions, anything anybody might have asked that the Jatai folks did not address throughout the program. And when we've got a link for this after it goes live, I'll share that link on my Twitter. I'll put a copy of this up on my blog at uh, ivanzootandclipperguy.com. Uh, I think we got us covered here. We're gonna send Ken home with a healthy luxury shave set as a gift, as a thank you for his time and his hair. Appreciate you being here. Thanks for watching. Have a great night. Bye-bye.